Good afternoon, everyone. It is Live. another edition of Speaker Series Live. I'm Ruben Austria with Farmers District 22. And I am Brad the Brick with the Sweatshop Gym. All right. Who we have today is Monica Coyle of TLD Law in Long Beach. Thanks for coming on board, Monica. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Yeah, you're in the hot seat today. I am. Yes. And we got the newly renovated office just for you. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, we you. had planned it such that, you know, when you come to the, you know, and have, you know, your your spot in the in the spotlight, that we'd have everything done. We planned it that way, right? Yep. We yeah, did. well, it's actually a great new office for the chamber. It's very nice. Yeah, Thank excellent, you. excellent. So, yeah, no, we wanted to just learn all about, all there is to learn about, about Monica, what you do, um, who you are, because I think, you know, that's what we do. That's the reason why we have these member spotlights. We, you know, we want to get to know you as a person, you as a professional, and yeah, so that's, you know, so, so you are, you've been here in Long Beach or working in, at your office for how, for how long? Um, almost three years. Okay. Three years. We were previously in downtown Long Beach. Okay. But we moved to Kilroy Airport Way, just down the street on Lakewood and Spring. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you obviously you're, you're in the legal business and the law business. We are. Right. right. And so what's your specialty? So TLD Law is actually a full service firm. Mm -hmm. I am a partner at the firm and I am a certified specialist in estate planning trusts and probate. Okay. Very. So could you explain a little bit about what that means? Sure. Which part? With trusts and probate? I that was a lot of words. I just okay. yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, sure where to start there. So I help people with um, planning for death and incapacity. Fun. Yeah. Oof. Tough, heavy. Tough heavy. Just got really heavy right now, yeah. right? But no. it doesn't yeah. have to be yeah, honestly. Yeah, no, but really um, brought down the mood there. Yeah. Trusts um, are actually a type of estate planning tool that we use. Um, probate is something that you want to avoid at all costs. Probate is a court process in California. Right. So if it's easy though, right? It's like a really quick, easy process. No, it's actually horrible. Oh. It's something you want to avoid at all costs. It takes over a year and it costs a lot of money. So in exchange for doing some estate planning and paying a little bit in attorney's fees, you could avoid the probate process. Sounds like a smart thing to do. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not that simple, right? So who needs It can be. We don't make it too hard. We make right, it right, right, easy. Right, right. So who needs estate planning? Really, everybody needs estate planning. Um, rich or poor, young or old, we all need estate planning. Okay. Why? Well, all of us have something that we want to protect. And even if you don't have a whole lot of assets, you have to plan for your own incapacity. Because if you don't appoint someone to take care of you in the event of incapacity, the state of California will decide that for you. And no one wants that. You don't want someone to step into your shoes and handle all of your finances and all of your medical decisions unless you pick someone that you really trust. Mm. Uh, well, you know what? I think this is probably better. Uh, we can kind of get a better idea on what what you do. Just give us an example of like something that, you know, maybe crisis avoided or maybe crisis not avoided. They didn't do they didn't do it. You know what yeah. you offer, I guess. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I to help typical families um, with their estate planning needs where one spouse might become incapacitated and have a number of assets in their name alone and their spouse is trying to help them um, not only get control of those assets for their family but also make medical decisions for them. You would think that it's a simple thing where you could go to the hospital and make medical decisions for your ailing husband or you know wife. But with the new HIPAA regulations, which are the Health Care Privacy Act, it makes it very difficult to do that, especially in a hospital setting. You can't access your own loved one's medical records. You can't make decisions for them. That happened um, recently with a family that I know where their 18-year-old went away to college. And unfortunately, at college, the student had a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. Parents flew out, tried to help them, and they were barred from making medical decisions for that 18-year-old because they were no longer a minor. Oh, Ooh. wow. And so these are the issues we help families with. You don't have to have a whole lot, but these are the type of incapacity issues that everyone faces. On the flip side, if you do have a lot of assets to protect, we help you with those as well so that you're not in the probate process and that they go to your family members whom you want to reach them with as little cost as possible. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're great at what you do, and you mentioned that you're very passionate about it. T tell us a little bit about why you got into that field. Um, that's a great question. Um, I was actually just a general civil litigator, trial attorney. 
I went to law school thinking I just wanted to be able to fight for people in general. Mm -hmm. And as I developed my practice, um, I came across a few elder abuse cases. And actually, those really spoke to me. I thought I, I grew passion for um, being able to fight for people when I saw elder abuse. Mm. That really got to me. And being able to help people with elder abuse matters kind of helped lead me down the path of helping people with the planning to try to avoid that elder abuse. So when you say elder abuse, like I picture somebody like actually abusing an elderly person? Yeah, there's actually two types of elder abuse. There's that physical elder abuse, which we deal with, um, often perpetrated by a nursing home or caregiver. Mm -hmm. And then there's the financial elder abuse, which we see more frequently, which can be perpetrated by a caregiver or a stranger or someone next door. But unfortunately, oftentimes it's also by a family member. Hmm. Yikes. It's fun stuff. Um, so you, so you, you like doing that. So you I like, like helping. helping. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's like a, you know, for me, I, I don't know. That, that seems like, that seems like really rough work. Then again, I own a gym. So I yeah. mean, I, I'm I more mean, on the lighthearted the side. I really like helping people and yeah. I like working with clients. I mean, a lot of times when people think of lawyers, they might think of big downtown lawyers, Yeah, you know, who do like a lot law of, and order, like do, do, well, I don't know the song. There's the criminal like stuff, which yeah. Which, I mean, I have a lot of friends and um, colleagues that are very passionate about criminal law. Well, because you had come from, you have a pretty big size firm. I mean, yeah. not big, but I mean, what, 20? Yeah, 20 we're attorneys, about 20 right? attorneys. We're probably considered a mid sized firm. But um, really, we really cater to the small business owner because we can help a small business owner pretty much with every aspect of their business, whether it's corporate formation whether it's business succession planning, whether it's estate planning, mm -hmm. if they're going through a divorce, if they have leases or contracts that need reviewing, if they're undergoing a business dispute with their partner, these are the type of things that our firm can do for a small business owner. I know it's great that you're part of the chamber because obviously there's <laughs> lots, of I mean, small businesses. lots of small businesses that yeah. may need you, right? Right, and, and they may or may not realize that um, with the changing laws that they need some planning. I mean, some of them might need some counseling on employment law, you know, whether or not their employee is an hourly employee or whether or not they're a contractor, whether they're paying them correctly, whether they're abiding by the correct overtime rules, or if they just have questions in general regarding employment manuals or employment agreements. Where do most of your clients come from? Like, what are, what are most of them looking for in this area? Um, most of our clients, I would say, are actually the small business owners. And we really um, have quite a few clients all around the southeast area. So we, um, we have a lot of clients here in Long Beach, Lakewood, Downey, Cerritos, Norwalk. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been there? Our firm has actually been in existence for over 50 years. We started in Downey, and we grew into Irvine and into Long Beach. And okay. so I think we're coming up on 55 years. 55 years. Yeah. Wow. And you've been there for? I've been there for 18 years. Wow. I really? started, yeah, I, my entire career has been at this firm, actually. I started my second year in law school, and I've been there ever since. So wow. I kind of went up the ranks. That's so, saying something. Yeah. Right? As because a law clerk, as an attorney, and then in 2010, I became a partner. So I was lucky enough to become a business owner. Very that's awesome. Cool. Very awesome. Now, that's saying something, because I think right now, like, the average amount of, you know, jobs or careers any one person would have before they turn a certain age is like five and you've been with the same place for yeah. 18 years. Yeah. That's amazing. I would say a lot. most of my colleagues have probably changed jobs several times, but I was lucky enough to find a firm that had the environment that um, in which my career can thrive, but also in which I could grow and raise a family and participate in the community. One of the things my firm really encourages is that all of the attorneys are part of a service organization. So oh. I'm part of the Seroptimist here in Lakewood, Long Beach. Oh, great. I've been a Seroptimist for over 10 years. Very yeah. awesome. Very awesome. I got in trouble by them. <laughs> what? <laughs> because I made a video of the... Uh, of the Lakewood 5K run. Yeah, that's I, our signature event. <laughs> and on the video, <laughs> I put uh, thank you to the uh, to the Lakewood sheriffs uh, for a host for hosting this run, and it was a really cool video. And I put it out there, and I got a message from somebody from Sir Optimus like, "That's our event." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> actually, I mean, it's a great event. We actually work with the sheriffs, so they're definitely our partners in that event. Yeah, and um, it's grilled. a wonderful. 
thrilled. It's a wonderful mm, 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 um, mm. event for the city of Lakewood, but also, I mean, it raises a lot of funds for Seroptimus and for the Lakewood Sheriffs. I had all that. Yeah, video. I run it. I run it. I had all that actually, video. So. Yeah. I, just let that work. I didn't know what Seroptimus was, to be honest. So I was like, I, I felt weird yeah. putting that because I had no idea what they yeah. were. Yeah. I'm a Rotarian. <laughs> I'm sure it's probably along the same lines. But I had no yeah. idea. What, can you explain so I don't get in trouble again what yeah. Seroptimist is? Seroptimist is um, an organization. It is a women's organization, service organization. It means best oh. for women. And they focus on um, women and children, service projects for women and children in need. And so we do a lot of um, scholarships and awards for women of distinction who have done something really amazing, whether it's just achieving some education and overcoming obstacles or doing something really amazing in their community. Also, we do scholarships. We also donate money to other sor- service organizations in the Lakewood area. Oh, that's great. I think yeah. I went to one of your your awards Awards ceremony. dinners, like, I think yeah. last, I forget exactly when it was, but it was great. Yeah, yeah. It, great. You guys definitely do a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and I've run the uh, 5K twice. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's yeah. 10K, but whatever. That's cool. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do it twice. <laughs> you stop at the finish line. It's fine, Ruben. We know you're getting ready for your marathons, but no, 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 no. no, 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 no. I run it two off, years <laughs> in a row. Oh, oh, awesome. oh row. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes way more sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing there, running a 10k? <laughs> you know they have those. Yeah, I'm running frontwards and backwards. Yeah. Um, well, no, that's great. And you yeah. also mentioned, you know, uh, you know, before we even got started live, that. Um, uh, a good portion the, of that your was off the record though that was off the record but we'll say we'll keep it on the record but you know a good portion of your company is is, is are, are women right you said yeah actually um it's pretty exciting we now have five women partners so we're really considered now a women women owned business. firm yeah that's amazing yeah that's amazing. very diverse firm it's great that's awesome that's amazing. I mean, that's probably also encouraging for people that, you know, you know, because obviously the chamber supports anyone that would want to start a business, you know, whether they're men, women, young, old. And I think it's great that you're, you know, you you kind of represent that. And also that's what you're passionate about as far as serving in the community. Yeah, it, it, I think it, it's I think it's really neat when um, a firm kind of reflects the community and participates in the community. So being a diverse firm and being um, very inclusive and just participating in community events, you know, um, I think it, it goes a long way in showing what a firm's passion is and how we help people. That's awesome. And you definitely do a lot. I mean, you're always at, you know, our events. And uh, we definitely uh, appreciate having you on, too. You always have... Uh, great suggestions and you're always inputting so we definitely oh, love that you. about you I was really honored to join um, the Lakewood Chamber Board this year it's been a wonderful experience I've gotten to meet so many great professionals and other business owners yeah we're I pretty we're pretty cool we are yeah I just joined too so I mean I mean I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your same boat but uh, just getting to know everybody on the board and you know being yeah. exposed to that's really cool the installation event was great it was a wonderful opportunity to network and meet people yeah. the chambers moved into these beautiful new offices yeah mm-hmm. so actually we always ask this I think we always do but not sure um, as, far as a member of someone that's joined the chamber you know you know why do you you know what would you do or what would you say to encourage businesses to be part and why should they be part of the liquid chamber oh great question i think they should join um to raise the awareness of their own business and to network and make connections with other businesses because they'll find that as they meet other business owners they'll find ways in which to help each other that there's ways in which they can help connect other people who might need their businesses even if they don't have a direct need and just increasing that what network will increase the people who will ultimately come to your business. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, have have, so have, you, said about have that. you found that about being in the, the chamber? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say um, it's, it's so rewarding because not only do you meet other business owners who you may or may not have a direct connection with or have a direct need with, it helps you connect with other businesses that you might know. And when right. you make those connections, you become kind of that link where people think of you as a connector and it and it ends up coming round you know it comes full circle so that you get additional clients even if that direct connection may not be someone that utilizes your business yeah especially with something that's so personal i mean anytime you're talking about finance or you know uh 
making a tr- contract for when you die. You know, things that are pretty personal. Right. Uh, I mean, you, you definitely want to have somebody that you trust, someone that's going to have your best interest, and somebody that you can at least come through, like, through a, a strong referral Referrals. to say, hey, this is somebody you should definitely go to. Uh, you know, they have my stamp. You know, because I don't think you could just walk into a business and go, hey, who wants to handle all my stuff in case nobody oh, else can? absolutely. Especially right. because oftentimes we're dealing with people at their most vulnerable state. Right. right. I mean, people are talking about their own assets, their own money, which are very personal things. Some people might be undergoing a recent death in the family, mm-hmm. very personal and very emotional. Mm-hmm. Or business owners, I mean, their livelihood, their entire lives are wrapped up in their businesses. And if something is going wrong where they might need legal help, they definitely want someone that might have been given to them through a referral, someone that they can trust because they'll do anything to protect their business. Right. That's, am- that's amazing. And you that's kind of true. you you kind of just summed up everything that we always try to say is that relationships matter, relationships mm-hmm. count. and and I think it's 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 a it's a privilege to have you as a member and on the board of the chamber. Oh, so thank you thank so you much. So much yes. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, with that, we're we're gonna wrap up. Um, just want to mention out there that you know if you're a chamber member listening to uh, if you're a chamber member uh, watching the speaker series live, we want you here, right? Yeah. Remember, wanna- well, not here like on our laps, but <laughs> here. On Monica's lap, or, or in the chair that she's sitting in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's get you on member spotlight. Um, another thing to mention is that we have a speaker series live. Uh, speaker, spe- uh, do we call it speaker you, series? You, live? you always do that. A live speaker that series event. Speaker series. I think you always speaker say. series. Yes, speaker series event next Tuesday evening. Uh, the presenter is Dave Ribble. He was actually here uh, two last weeks week. Ago? Last week. Last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah, you're very not not very good with dates, huh? Dude, I have no idea what date <laughs> it is today. The 16th, no May 16th from 5 to 7 p.m. Make sure you come out to join us. Again, Monica, thank you so much thank you again. for thank having you us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, and uh, it's Ruben Austria. Brad the Brick. Signing off. We'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Monica Goyle. I'm a partner at TLD Law. I'm a certified specialist in estate planning, trusts, and probate. TLD Law is a full-service firm, and we are available to help small business owners with all of their needs. You can find us at www.tldlaw.com, or you can call at 562-923-0971. Thanks.